everyone. Thank you so much for clicking on this Netflix review. The fact that you're willing to sacrifice a few minutes out of your day to consume my content really does mean the world to me. If you guys are ever curious about whether something is good, bad, or completely mediocre, come to my channel and I will let you know because I want to become your go-to Netflix guy. So subscribe to my channel if you haven't yet, and let's start talking about Record of Ragnarok, which is an anime series that's been released on Netflix today and is based off of a Japanese manga of the same name. Let's break down the story really quickly. So Record of Ragnarok is actually the story of Ragnarok, or rather a retelling of it, where ultimately 13 gods have to champion against 13 human warriors to decide the fate of the human race. Ultimately, we get a bunch of different arena battles between the 13 most powerful gods and 13 famous human warriors. And that premise alone is captivating. But when you match that with great voice acting, with great action, and with beautiful animation, you have got an incredibly entertaining series. And that's what we have on our hands right here. So yes, I'm gonna put it out there, animation was beautiful. The characters' designs was great. One of the aspects I loved most about this series was how they were able to reimagine existing characters in this anime format. We've got very well-known and established characters like Thor, the God of Thunder, but the way he's depicted in the series or anime is so different to what I'm used to. Even Mjolnir is a completely different imagining of that hammer. When I saw him, I was like, is this, is this really the design for Thor? And I know a lot of people are going to love these new designs or these reimaginings, but then others are going to turn away in disgust. And so a lot of the reimaginings, I would give a lot of them a thumbs up, but then others straight down. Like, as much as I thought it was very creative and unique the way they decided to tackle a character like Thor, I thought the redesign was terrible. And Mjolnir, like this legendary hammer, looked so dumb. <laughs> like, it really didn't feel powerful. It was big, and it was huge, and at times grotesque, but not a mythical Nordic weapon. And you have that with a bunch of other gods as well. We also have Zeus, who's supposed to be, you know, the king of the gods. And in many ways, he's just an old pervert. A very powerful pervert, but he's just your typical archetype of an anime grandpa, who's just horny all the time. And that's Zeus, down to a T. But then we get other characters like Poseidon, for example, who I thought was probably the best reimagined character in the story. He was cool and collected and calm, but so incredibly violent. And so that's a character redesign I can get behind because he's not almost made fun of or not necessarily a joke character. There's still that honor towards the source material. And there's still that respect from the source material. And that I really enjoyed. In regards to animation and action, beautiful. Honestly, the action was top notch but it very quickly became repetitive and it fell into that anime trope of, wow, you thought you defeated me, but here's my secret power. And then they use the secret power and the guy's like, oh, this is your secret power. It's a good thing I have a secret defense you didn't know about. You have a secret defense? Well, here is my other secret power you didn't know about. And here's my secret form. And now I'm gonna do something that I've never done before, but I've mastered it already. And now I'm gonna take what you've mastered and I'm going to adapt it into my own style. No one has ever seen this before. It's unstoppable, you will die, and then it didn't even leave a scratch. It didn't leave a scratch because I was using this, and oh, you were using this, well I'm going to remove that by using this, and it just goes on. Like, when a character finally got defeated, it was, finally, someone actually died because that was just, that was just too much. And ultimately, that becomes incredibly draining when you're forced to sit on the edge of your seat for so long because it's using a character's finishing move. Not every single move can be a finishing move. And that's a big issue I feel like a lot of anime struggles with. I'm using my big finisher. Well, I just blocked your big finisher. Here's my big finisher. Well, I just blocked yours. And it just goes on. And I'm not going to go into that whole cycle again. But that's how the series felt. It was just non-stop, over-the-top action. And of course, then not only that, there were breaks in the action, just like in things like, for example, Dragon Ball Z. It's fight, 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 stop. Dialogue time. Fight, 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 stop. Dialogue time. It's exactly the same in this series. We've got two characters doing one big move, one big move, one big move, one big move. 
time for the audience to talk. Wow. Did you see how that character did that? Yes, but watch out because this character is going to do that. You're saying this character is going to do this, but how is that possible? Well, it's possible because, and it just goes on. So you have repetitive fighting sequences where one just uses a finishing move over and over again. Then you have a dialogue sequence where it's just, this character did this, and now they're going to do this. And isn't that remarkable? So we have a lot of repetitiveness in every single episode, which makes up for a repetitive series. So it really just becomes repetitive, unfortunately. But at the end of the day, I would highly recommend this series to any anime fans. This is an anime action through and through. Beautiful animation, really engaging characters when they aren't just being pause fed to repeat narration, and really, really gorgeous visuals. But guys, thank you so much for watching this review. You guys are awesome. You're the best, and I hope to see you again in another review.